So who are you? All right, my name is Edward, and I'm with uh, Vocal. And you're going to help me build a new video studio here, I hear. That's what it sounds like, yeah. The nice thing is that you don't need any equipment other than your computer. So tell me what you guys do. Yeah, well, what we, what we uh, basically do is interactive town halls. And uh, we feel that sometimes that term has been thrown out a lot as far as like, you know, there's a lot of sites out there that broadcast out. You can do some text, you know, live text chat. What we do is uh, you can actually, as a host, broadcast out to a virtual auditorium and take live video calls and text questions back from the audience. Okay. You can actually have multiple co-hosts. You might assign a remote co-host to come in from Florida, another one from New York, maybe from London. And you can actually assign remote video screeners to screen those calls that come in live so you can confidently broadcast that call knowing, okay, Edward uh, is screening from LA. I can confidently broadcast that call. That person's ready to go. Or Jesse screened that call. He's ready to go. Uh, and the nice thing about the entire application is that besides being completely remote, that you can assign roles at a couple clicks, the entire application can be embedded on any page or blog. So for so if I'm CNN or Building 43 in this if case. You're, if you're Building 43, for example, you're doing an event, maybe something around like entrepreneurship, and you embed it on Building 43, I might come along and go, oh, sweet, Robert's doing an event. Let me copy the embed code just like a YouTube video, put it on my blog because my audience is going to love it. Because when you actually enter the event, it expands over your page. So while you're participating in the virtual town hall event, you've never left the site you're on. So it can be embedded on as many sites as you wish. All of the audience sees each other and interacts in the interactive town hall, but they, ne they never leave the sites they traffic most. And you're using Flash off of the built-in video camera. So I can hook an external camera. You can hook here, an right? external camera. You can even hook up multiple cameras to a video mixer and bring it in via FireWire if you want to pre-cut multiple cameras into just Flash, or you can just use your built-in camera on your iMac. So. And there are some limitations so far. It's 4 by 3 video. Correct. Uh, it doesn't record yet, although you're going to announce that any day. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. This video will probably be up right when you're announcing yeah, that. Yeah, the feature. interesting thing is we've kind of been in this like pseudo private beta in the sense that we've been working with uh, select publishers to be hosts, but anybody of the general audience has been able to participate. Like we did some tests with Paolo uh, Coelho, the author of The Alchemist. Yeah. He took call. He was he had a he was in Paris and he took calls from like all over the world and text questions. Uh, Ariana Huffington was in LA. She took in a co-host, uh, Carl Honore from London. Um, but the nice thing is that anybody was able to participate, even though it was a closed beta as far as the publishers, for us to feel out the system, make sure the screener system and everything was in place. Now, what, one problem when you use systems like this, if, if the people on the other end aren't using headsets, right. sometimes you hear feedback and stuff Absolutely, like that. Do yeah. you have that same problem? Do you have uh, to have currently, yes, there are some things that we're working on. But what we're, the way we solve that is the screeners are basically the last kind of buffer before you can you give it off to the host, and the host can see in the screener, the, the callers tab, OK, this one has been approved. So screeners should always check for making sure, of course, their video is good, their lighting, if they want to go that precise. Uh, there's no, they have some earbuds plugged in or USB if they need to refresh because it all happens behind the scenes. It's a private yeah. conversation. So uh, it's not distracting so the event can continue forward while you might have 10 screeners screening callers all the time. And so on my main display surface, mm -hmm. you know, I'm the, I'm the host or I'm the switcher. Right. And there's five, let's say I have five people all called in. Right. What do I see on my screen and how do I switch the cameras so that I can say, say oh, go to Steve Gilmore's camera and then go to Mike Harrington's that, camera. That, that's a great question. You basically have a callers tab that you have and the screeners have. Yeah. So you can see the live video calls and you can see the text questions. Okay. And you basically click the broadcast call button and it brings it up to the screen. Okay. And uh, so as far as if you have a co-host that's actually live, once you're live, you actually have little windows that pop up on the top and you can actually just one click editing right between the camera shots. You have a multi shot if you want to hit apply. Pretty simple. Can I show what's on my screen to my audience? Uh, no, they never actually see the back end as far as the callers tab. Uh, are you talking about like a screen? Well, show? if I wanted to share my screen, what's on my screen, if I wanted to do a demo of something. Okay, right. Could I, could I share that or do I have to shoot the screen with a camera? You would probably have to shoot the screen with a camera, although there are applications out there that you can use. For example, Macintosh, I believe there's... CamTwist or Cam something? CamTwist is yep. great. CamTwist <laughs> is a great thing because it just hijacks your camera, basically. Um, we are looking to do that in the near future, but we're so we're kind of focused on fleshing out some of some of the other core features like recording and the site itself. Yeah, and is there a text chat so everybody can absolutely? Text well, the chat nice thing is that uh, beyond the video call in and ask a question feature, we have two modules inside of the event. We have a Twitter module 
and we have a live text chat module. Okay. So the nice thing is, like I said, when you embed that div code, you get the whole thing on your site right there. So you have the modules and the live video calls and everything going on. Let's focus on the tech, on the chat uh, module. Can I moderate that? Can I kick people out if they're being jerks? If you see, uh, you're, anyone that you assign a staff can kick people from the event okay. if they feel that someone in the text chat is being unruly. Uh, you can go to your viewers tab and you can actually live search their name after the third letter, letter it'll pop up and you can just boom, one click. Okay, and you can kick and ban the yes. usual text chat Absolutely. stuff. Uh, in the Twitter component, that's interesting. How are, how are tweets getting into that component? That's a good question. Right now, what we basically have is a keyword search that the host or the co-host can set to pull in. So we have to come up with a hashtag. Exactly, and come up with a hashtag. Or if you might just use, you know, Robert Scoble, or you might use Scobleize, or whatever it might be. Well, that'll uh, get a lot of noise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, you can come up with a hashtag, and essentially people sometimes, if the text, sometimes when the live text chat has like over 500 people in it or something, uh, it tends to move a little quick. Yeah. So people generally t either tweet in through their phone uh, or tweet in a different tab so that it pops up next to the text chat a little bit more controlled. So sometimes the hosts take Twitter and text chat and actual broadcasting text questions, um, but it's, it's a very interactive experience. And again, if somebody uh, puts something inappropriate into Twitter, can I remove that? Can I have a moderator watching the Twitter? Twi uh, you could probably, thing? right, currently you probably need to just maybe temporarily switch the, the search term or something like that. I'm not sure how we can go through. That's a good question, actually. Yeah. Uh, uh, because that's just basically pulling in whatever is out there on Twitter with that specific hashtag, yes. Okay. One of the big trends on YouTube and Facebook and other places is 16 by 9 high def video. Right. You're still 4 by 3 and fairly low def video, right? Absolutely, yes. And there's definitely, we're uh, constantly working on uh, seeing the best solution as far as doing some type of uh, implementation is for HD, for those uh, publishers that really want to maybe do a quick install or something and allow a high def broadcast. On the other hand, that means you probably don't need as much bandwidth as, as I would need if I had five HD streams. Coming exactly. Like That's the nice thing. Right now, it's a pretty versatile platform that anyone can kind of participate. On the way up, on the drive up here, I, I was tethered via my iPhone uh, wirelessly and watching one of our events stream straight to my computer, and we could still participate. It's kind of fun. Okay. Um, uh, what so sort of bandwidth do I need as a host to make sure that I have a good experience? As a host, I mean, in all honesty, as long you as we recommend anyone on your staff, whether they're remote screeners or co-hosts or even editors, to be hardwired in. Okay. Um, but you really don't need anything beyond DSL. We recommend uh, you know cable, you know maybe mm -hmm. at least like 500, 500 up. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, 500 down, 500 up somewhere around there. So it's pretty. And then how, how much does this system cost for me to use? It's a great question. So uh, we basically have uh, a couple different models. We have a free version where you have a, you can customize the title and the, the, the splash screen image before the event goes live, of course the date and time. That's free and it's ad supported in the sense that the host actually takes a commercial break and you have a pre-roll come in okay. uh, where the host is, have a little countdown timer. Um, then we have uh, the skin, you can upgrade, still ad supported. If you want to skin it, bring in a product carousel, bring in your own sponsors, that outbound links, maybe it's a book talk, you have a book in the carousel item, you have up to three. Um, that's actually $4 per event, so it's still pretty affordable and it's ad supported. And then we also have a white label version since there's been a lot of interest as far as like even just corporate communications and uh, managers and internal town halls uh, that actually removes advertising and that's based on per use, like uh, per user hour, essentially. Yeah. Um. Can I put titles on top of it or lower third stuff on the video display surface itself? Currently, no, not, okay. not right now. Right now what you can do is you can skin the color of the background, you can bring in your own uh, products, carousels, sponsorships with outbound links, and uh, you can also, of course, change the images and you can even change the backdrop behind the video preview area. Okay. So you can uh, customize that as well. So can, can I not put a like a watermark, like a, a Building 43 logo in the corner of the video? Not in the video itself, but what, what's being recorded is not just the video, but it's also the background area. So if you customize that, you can okay. have it branded in there right into a beautiful graphic if you want. You okay. can even upload like a Swift file so it's moving like a CNN flag or something like that. So it's actually really interactive. That will be more important when, we, uh, when you give us the ability to record to a file and upload to YouTube for later viewing. Absolutely. Because I need to put branding elements into that video and put lower third stuff, you know. Right. And this is who's speaking. Absolutely. Like, like probably is appearing over him right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
what else do I need to know about this? Do I have any ability to do my own advertising? I, I guess I could switch to a ca another computer that's running in right, that with, and say, hey, let's let's uh, take take with, two advertisement come up. With the white label advertising, you can actually bring in your own advertising pre-rolls if you'd like to bring them in. It can be a pre-roll, it can be during the event. Uh, okay. So it, we are kind of allowing that diversity for those that decide to rem remove advertising, but they may still want to hype it up with like a little pre pre-event uh, or something. So it's something that we're actually considering for sure. Okay. Um, in the UI itself, can I see the other camera people or the other camera angles? Can I can I switch my own cameras? So, or is it all just I'm just watching the video and somebody else is switching the cameras? Uh, oh, you're saying well, once the event when you're actually streaming in the event live? Yeah. Okay, so you're streaming the event live, and uh, if it's just let's say you're one a host and I'm the co-host coming in from LA, uh, if the editor if if you or the editor decides to one click to me or to you rather, you're, everyone sees you. Yeah. And then uh, I'm still in the little, we have a little video preview area in the top right. And that's where anyone that's currently either a live caller that's being broadcast or a co-host can always be heard so they can still communicate and everyone can hear them, but only when it, somebody cuts to them so we bring them in and you can okay. kind of flip around. But I can't, I can't as a viewer click on you and just watch Absol your camera. Absolutely not, yeah. Okay. You can do that in the upcoming recording, the interactive recording feature that we're gonna have when you okay. actually play it back. You can re-edit it yourself live, if you will. Um, but when it's actually live, it's really uh, up to your, the host, the co-host, or the editor. Yeah, and does each camera need to be on a separate computer or could I have two separate video cameras being uh, switched to, well you said there's a, vi you, you can, can, you can do an you, editor you, on hardware. You can, go, you can actually do like, yeah, if there's some hardware out there that you can plug in multiple cameras and then bring it out via one firewire into Flash into the computer, okay. in that case you can actually cut ahead of time. Um, but then the beautiful thing about our system is that now you can have a completely remote uh, roles completely outsourced, whether it's your co-host, your screeners, or your editor, uh, you, you no longer need anything beyond uh, this guy right here and a set of earbuds. Very cool. Are you going to have a marketplace for uh, if I need a co-host or I need a screener? Uh, that's I... actually something that we've been talking to some of our initial community about that's been really interested. For example, uh, we just finished up these interactive events with uh, Imogen Heap, who's a, a musician, and she was basically uh, auditioning cellists across the country before each city that she went to, and the winner would actually play with her on stage yeah. at her actual concert. Um, the, so. We actually uh, outsourced some of those roles to help her out for her event. One of her fan bases from the Heap Street team, if you will, um, up in Canada was a screener, and another fan of hers from New York was a screener for every event while she was going, you know, broadcasting from different cities yeah. all the time. Tell me what the infrastructure is that you built this on, and how reliable is it? Right. Uh, so obviously, if I'm building a, a CNN.com, I need to make sure you guys stay up. Absolutely. Right? No, that's a great question. So the the, the actual uh, embeddable platform that you see here is primarily Flash Flex. Um, as far as the site where we'll have aggregated players and featured content on the home homepage, um, that's being uh, that's that's the, the a component of like Merb and Ruby and a couple other things as well. Mm -hmm. So. And how is that hosted? And where? You, where well, the the hosting for the we're using uh, we're doing CD Networks, I believe, and uh, Amazon, I believe, right now. Okay. It's doing everything as far as like streams and stuff like that. Yeah. Very cool. Um, and that gives you scalability and make Absolutely. sure Absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, it's pretty interesting because some of the uh, hosts that we've had have very large audiences, so we see like spikes in traffic instantaneously. Like one tweet, you have like 500 people in there in like five seconds. So yeah, uh, it's it's definitely nice to see that it's a, in a scalable fashion, and that includes even your broadcasting area. You, you, we can, you know, some people like to ask, well, how many co-hosts can I have? You know, the Huffington Post did an event where they had four co-hosts. Yeah. Uh, the truth is we built it into where you can have, we tested it up to 350. You can do unlimited, and the video windows just keep getting smaller. We don't recommend that because then the streams start getting crossed, and some people might download for slower, and people's bandwidth connection. We recommend no more than four, but you can go as many as you want. Imogen Heap had an interactive dance one time before she went on Letterman, and she broadcasted 25 callers from around the world, so everybody viewing could see everybody dancing. Pretty interesting. Very cool. Tell me, uh, what's what's the company state? How are you funded? What, what we are actually you everything funding? you see uh, today, as far as from idea to release, is uh, based off of seed. We're actually ra raising our angel round currently. Mm -hmm. um, it's it was nice because what we basically were able to do is hire uh, the development team and really flush out the concept. We released a prototype actually at the demo conference uh, last year, March of this year. 
and we then we refined the product to what you see it now and started you know working with different clients. Yeah. So that's where we start now. That's where we are now. Currently about to release the site. Very cool. The part that's coolest for me is that not only can you bring in multiple roles and all decentralized, but the fact that it can be embedded on different sites and you still participate without ever leaving that site that you're on. So I think right. that's really cool in the sense that uh, you know some other service providers out there, as soon as you click, it take, bounces you out to their site. Not the case here. You actually gain those statistics, right? Do you have, have you tried it on low-end computers? You know, three hundred dollar netbooks. Does it work okay? There? It, it works. You, you know, let me tell you. Before I bought my new Mac, I had a very low-end PC, and uh, and it was it was quite all right as long as we had you know a pretty reasonable version of Flash and uh, a, a moderate version of like IE or Firefox. Um, not Fire, you know, Flash nine or ten is is probably more than good enough. So. Yeah. Yeah. But a, a Mac Mini, a Mini Mac would be more than enough with uh, a good camera on it. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. So those are fairly small. Yeah, and you can small. Get a whole bunch in a suitcase. Well, cool. Yeah. I, I'm looking forward to trying it out. Great. Awesome. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Where do we learn about, more about it? By the way, you, you have a weird spelling. I we think. do have a weird spelling. The company's name is Vocal because we're all about unmuting the internet. But uh, it's spelled V O K L E dot com. Very cool. And yeah. you guys are on Twitter as well? We are on Twitter. It's uh, twitter.com slash vocal. V O K L E. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.